it's all in the hips. It's all in the hips. You guys might remember Chubbs. Chubbs from a movie called Happy Gilmore, a famous golf movie. Um, well, we lost Carl Weathers recently. Um, and it made me think about the hips and how the golf swing isn't really all in the hips, but a lot of us think it is. So I just wanted to talk about our lower body behavior a little bit and get an idea of what the hips can do, what is allowed, and what we can't do. Everyone's different. Everyone has limitations, hip flexor strength, you know, the different muscles that we use to rotate. You know, so we, we don't expect everyone to look the same. But we want you to understand that golf is a lever system sport, and that means that that lever system itself should be the thing that we control and that we try to move, not necessarily having our lower body move more than that lever system. Okay? So with that thought of all in the hips, let's talk backswing first. And something that we see. I'm going to grab a couple of alignment sticks here. And we'll kind of just reference sort of the back foot edge and the front foot edge. And you know, a lot of times if I get someone who never played golf before, I see two things. And the first thing I see is I'll see the swing, right? Where everything is moving, right? But in our conversation, I also see people that think the swing should go boom, boom, right? Where the hips are moving side to side, okay? When that happens, we're not moving athletically and we're not using any of the big muscles that we use when we throw or when we shoot a basket or when we kick or kick a soccer ball or, or a football for that matter, okay? Um, when we throw, we have a lot of rotation along with that throw. Of course, we can just throw like this, but the added power comes from those big muscles rotating. If I'm kicking, same thing. If I was doing a karate kick, there's an element of rotation of our body. Punch, we get that as well, right? And then I think of that field goal kicker analogy where as you kick, we have an element of rotation working around, right? So we want rotation over sliding. And that's the first thing that I want you to, to sort of reference. It's not that we have to rotate aggressively, but I'd rather this hip rotate behind versus going that way, okay? From the behind camera, you might notice something there. When I think about rotating my hip, a couple of things can happen. From the back camera there, I straighten my leg out to rotate my hip and to make sure it didn't go kind of outside of this alignment stick, okay? You also see that the rear is kind of going to the target when I do that. There's some instructors that really teach that kind of a feel. Rear to the target, arms working up and back. I may for some people, but I try not to use philosophy. I try to get you to understand what you're doing from an athletic standpoint, and then we kind of work from there, okay? But this is not a death move. If the hip goes this way, oh boy, we've changed our body position, and now to hit the golf ball from there, I have to move my hip laterally as I swing through and I have a little thing called hope, but not much of it, right? But when I actually rotate, even if my leg straightens, I have a lot more depth naturally. I haven't compromised my original position. And to get back to the golf ball, I don't have to do any hip sliding or jumping to do that. I just have to make sure that they rotate back to where they start from and my spine angle stays in place. I'm not necessarily a fan of that feeling in that move. And I know there are some instructors that really teach that, you know, where they, they'll, they'll have you set up and, and the feeling they want you to have, because we all know that that's the death move. They want you to feel like this is going to the target as a way to fight that feeling, right? And from this position, athletic or not, I'm able to square the club face up and get back to the ball a little bit easier. Okay. The reason why I don't like that, any time that we are rotating our hip to the target too aggressively and our leg straightens out and that knee buckles, I know our weight's in our heel. And I have a challenge for any of you. Can you guys name a sport where we're athletic with our weight in our heels? I can't think of one. I know some of you grapplers, wrestlers, jiu-jitsu people will have an argument, but I still think you're doing things for leverage 
even from those maybe not so dominating positions. But I'd love to hear your arguments. So you know, feel free to, to challenge me on that. Name a sport where we're athletic with our weight in our heels. Okay, I can't name one. And I feel like with that leg buckled, same thing. Name a sport where we, we swing with a buckled, or swing, where we move athletically with a buckled knee. We don't get a lot of that. A little bit of knee flex, more on the ball of our feet or flat footed for stability. So when we're like that, heel, legs in an unathletic position, I don't feel like we're athletic until that knee flexes. And in golf, we deal with timing, tempo. We deal with a lot of stuff, the type of stance that we have. So I don't want to be unathletic or in a bad position anywhere in my golf swing. Okay, So it's something that I look out for when people are straightening this leg. How is their timing? How is their ball contact? If you're a new golfer, I may have a different argument than if you were a plus handicap, a college golfer, someone with more ability. If there's a reason why you're doing that, great. And there are some reasons that we may get to of why that action you know, might be good. OK?